In this lecture, we're going to discuss a phenomenon known as the Hall Effect, which was named after the scientist who discovered it. So, in order to understand the Hall Effect, we have to recall the following important principle. Whenever an electric charge is moving through a magnetic field, that electric charge will feel a force as a result of that magnetic field. Once again, recall that electric charge moving within a magnetic field will feel a magnetic force as a result of that magnetic field. Now, the direction of the force can be given by using the right hand rule. So, let's begin by supposing we have the following conducting material. So, we have a sheet of metal as shown. Now, as electrons are traveling through our sheet of conducting metal, let's suppose they're traveling in this general direction our magnetic field which points perpendicularly upward with respect to the plate will create a magnetic force that will act on that moving charge on that electron now the direction of that particular magnetic force can be determined using right hand rule number three so we take our right hand and we direct our fingers in the same direction as the motion of our electron so it's essentially in to the board. Then we take our fingers and we curl them in the direction of our magnetic field which is upward. We extend our thumb and because this is a negative charge we flip our thumb and that implies that our magnetic field points in a negative direction along our x-axis. So once again as electrons travel through the conductor that lies in the magnetic field B the electrons will experience a magnetic force. Now, this magnetic force will cause the electrons to travel closer to one side than the other. So, this magnetic force will essentially cause our electron to follow a curved pathway. And so, that means the electrons will travel closer to this end of our conductor than this end. So, this will create an overall negative charge on one side of our conductor conductor and an overall positive charge on the other side of our conductor as shown in the following top to bottom view. So after a little while one end will have a negative charge and the other end will have a positive charge. So, now we have a separation of electric charge as a result of this magnetic force. So, this separation of electric charge will in turn create a voltage difference between our two sides of our conductor and this voltage difference is known as the whole EMF, where EMF is simply our electromotive force, which is simply another word for a voltage. So, this voltage voltage will continue to build up until the electric field produces an electric force on the moving charge that is equal and opposite to the magnetic force. And this effect is known as the Hall effect. So once again, let's start from the beginning. So in the beginning, we have the following neutral plate and our electrons are traveling in the following positive direction along our x axis. Now because we have a moving charge within a magnetic field that points out of the page as shown by the following symbols, there will be a magnetic force that will act on our moving electron that will tend to push it towards this side of our plate. And that means after some time passes we're going to have a buildup of negative charge on this end and a buildup of positive charge on that end. And because we have a separation of charge, that means we're going to have a voltage difference, which is known as the Hall EMF. Now, as a result of the separation of electric charge, an electric field will exist. And that electric field will begin on the positive end and will point to the negative end. And as a result of this electric field, an electric force will act on our electric charge. And that electric force will be opposite to the force of our magnetic field. So eventually, these two forces will be exactly 
the same. And at that point, our electron will feel a net zero force, so it will travel in a straight line. So, this effect is known as the whole effect. So, let's examine this particular situation when the two forces are equal. So, our magnetic force acting on the electric charge is equal to our electric force that is acting on our electric charge. Now, by definition of our magnetic force, the magnetic force is equal to the quantity of charge Q of that electric charge multiplied by the velocity of our charge multiplied by the magnetic field that exists within this region of space and that is equal to the electric force which is given by taking the quantity of charge Q and multiplying by the electric field. Now this H simply stands for the whole electric field which is produced by our Hall effect. Now this velocity is a special type of velocity that we spoke about in a previous lecture. So this velocity is known as the drift velocity. It's a essentially the average velocity that our single electron is experiencing when it's traveling in the following direction and this B is simply our magnetic field. So notice we have a Q on this side and a Q on the other side of our equation. So we can cancel these Q's and we see that the whole electric field or simply the electric field produced as a result of the whole effect is equal to the product of the drift velocity of our electron and the magnetic field in which this plate is found in. Now recall by definition the voltage is equal to the product of the electric field and the distance between our two separated charges. So the distance D is the distance between this end and this end. It's the width of our plate. So, that implies using this equation and this result, we can essentially calculate what the whole voltage is. The whole voltage, also known as the whole EMF, given by the symbol, is equal to the electric field EH multiplied by D, this distance. And that is equal to, well, since EH is equal to our drift velocity multiplied by the magnetic field, we see that the electromotive force is equal to VD, the drift velocity, multiplied by the magnetic field, multiplied by the width, by the distance from these two plates, from this end to this end on the plate, and that is equal to our Hall EMF. So this is our equation that gives us the voltage difference produced as a result of the Hall effect.